Knowing what stock or ETF to invest in is very important, but knowing which actual investing platform or entity to have your money held within is an even more important decision. As we've seen lately, financial institutions can collapse and with it, one's money can also. You don't wanna save up and invest your nest egg for years just to have the entity dissolve or collapse so picking where to invest is so important. In this video, I'm gonna quickly review the pros and cons for nine different investing platforms, including the newer, hip, cool online platforms, and then also tried and true old school platforms, so you can make the best decision for you. At the end, I'll also explain how I'd pick if I was totally new in 2023, and give you insight into which ones are my favorites. And a spoiler alert is that it's not just the one that I'm investing with. And if you would do me a favor and go ahead and comment down below what your favorite brokerage is or what account you like using and why. I have a lot of beginners that watch this channel and so providing them with a library of things other than what I have to say or reasons what I think would be awesome for them. The first one on this list is a fan favorite and one that a lot of people really like just because it's so easy and because it's cool, and that one is Robinhood. The pros for Robinhood is that it has $0 commissions, high quality mobile investment app, it has fractional shares investing, which traditionally, if a stock was trading for $500 per share, you needed to have at least $500 to invest in it. Robinhood lets investors buy fractional shares of thousands of stocks, even if they only have $1 to invest. The cons for Robinhood is that there's no access for mutual funds and fixed income products. They've only been around since 2015, and they have some backlash and shadiness around the whole GameStop incident in 2021. Robinhood famously froze trades around GameStop and some adjacent hot stocks as the company teetered on the edge of what its platform and its pocketbook could handle. One super cool feature that Robinhood has is called Robinhood Gold. While Robinhood is known for being the no fee brokerage, the company does have a premium product known as Robinhood Gold, and this version of the platform costs $5 per month, but could be well worth it to active investors. Robinhood also has IRA investing. Robinhood matches 1% of every dollar on all IRA contributions. The 1% match will be available around the same time as your deposit, according to Robinhood, and the match doesn't count toward your annual contribution limits. With no commission fees, access to trade fractional shares and many investment types, Robinhood's high quality app trading platform is best suited for beginner investors wanting a solid place to invest. The next platform is called Webull. The pros of Webull is that it has low costs, it's an easy to use platform, very advanced tools, it does have access to cryptocurrency, there's cash management, and they also have fractional shares like Robinhood. The cons here is that there's no mutual funds and the educational support is pretty weak. Webull is definitely for those younger generations or for those that want to see a really cool interface, a really cool app, and almost like the gamification of the graphics. One thing to definitely note here though is that Webull is owned by a company called Fumi Technology, which is a Chinese company and that's neither a positive nor a negative, but it's something that you definitely want to keep in mind, especially with all the political conversations having to do with China and the United States. The next platform is called M1 Finance. M1 Finance provides an intriguing blend of automated investing paired with expansive portfolio customization to go alongside borrowing and spending features. You can select from more than 60 pre-built portfolios called PIEs, a reference to portfolio pie charts, or build your own strategy. The pros with M1 Finance are extensive portfolio management customization options, margin loans accessible at low interest rates with $5,000 invested, no fees for trading or account management, spending and borrowing options complement the portfolio management, and it does have fractional shares. The cons would be that it's only been around since 2016, and M1 Finance was designed for seasoned investors. Beginners may run into difficulty using the platform due to a lack of access to human consultants, goal planning, and financial calculators. M1 Finance is definitely one of the coolest platforms, and especially with those 60 built-in portfolio pies, that's a pretty cool feature that you get to choose, so it's pretty hands-off and passive, 
for those of you that don't want to just keep doing research all the time. And if you aren't already in a group of like-minded investors with the goal to better your financial future, definitely check out my Patreon group where we have live Zoom meetings every two weeks and great discussions like this one today to make sure that we are all on the right track. It's only $20 per month and you also get access to me to DM at any given time to answer your questions. Check it out in the link below. And let's move on to this next one that's truly passive and so hands-off. And this next one is a force among robo-advisors and has gotten super famous recently because of all of its super cool features. And this one's called Wealthfront. Now the pros of Wealthfront is that they have a low ETF expense ratios, daily tax loss harvesting, automatic rebalancing, do-it-yourself and automated investing options, and the Wealthfront taxable investment account, traditional IRA, Roth IRA, or 529 college savings account are all available through Wealthfront. The cons are that there's no human financial advisors. It does have a 0.25% management fee. There's a $500 account minimum, and it doesn't have any fractional shares. One thing I really like about Wealthfront is there is an option for socially responsible investing. This option is an automated investing that clients can choose to invest in. You can invest in Wealthfront's SRI portfolio or customize any other Wealthfront portfolio to include socially responsible options for no additional fee. The power of this portfolio is in its robo-advisors and the automatic options, but if you wanted to, you could invest on your own and pick individual stocks if that's more your style. But if that was going to be your main goal and the main way you're going to invest, then I think that there are better options than Wealthfront for something like that. And this next one is the Interactive Brokers IBKR Lite, which is a great international trading platform that's high on safety and sustainability. The pros for this one are that it has a large investment selection, it has strong research and tools. They have over 18,000 no transaction fee mutual funds. As far as the cons that I could find, the website is a little bit difficult to navigate. Overall, I wanted to include this one because of its international trading. And since a lot of you are outside of the United States and ask which type of brokerage might be best, this one was a good one that I found. It seems pretty safe. And I looked up their balance sheet and I did like what I saw. But if I was going to invest using this platform, I think I would dive even deeper. So make sure to really look into that. The next one on my list actually comes from a huge bank. Now, a lot of your banks probably do have a lot of platforms that you could invest through. And the reason why I traditionally don't like those platforms is because they usually have hidden fees or just fees in general, whereas a lot of the platforms nowadays are just going zero fees. But as far as banks are concerned, this is definitely the one that I think is the best. And this one is JP Morgan. The pros are that there's commission-free trades, lots of powerful tools, lots of different investments to pick from, a high-powered and seamless app, bonuses to get started, and not just brokerage accounts, but also IRAs and Roth IRAs. The cons have to be that JP Morgan's always at the center of some shady stuff, and being the biggest bank in the world comes with a lot of power and moral concerns. If you have regular banking accounts with them, it may be a good idea to have an investing account elsewhere just to diversify. Just like any of the other ones, you're probably gonna wanna do some digging just to see exactly what types of fees are associated with the type of investing that you want to do. If you're self-directing and doing everything on your own, there doesn't seem to be fees by them, but for JP Morgan to automate for you, there's a fee of 0.35%, which is isn't terribly high considering that it's an all-in fee. Now with JP Morgan, you do get a bunch of safety and stability knowing that it is the biggest bank in the world and they just keep getting bigger. So I wouldn't be concerned about a collapse or your money being lost because of the entity itself. So this option is actually a better option than I thought before I did the research. The next one on my list is Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab stands out among brokers for its customer service, $0 trade commissions, and large selection of mutual funds. The pros from Charles Schwab is that they have three platforms with no minimum or fees, an above average mobile app, extensive research, research from more than 20 providers, including Moody's, Morningstar, Recognia, and Thompson Reuters, plus more in-house generated commentary and tools. There's a large fund selection, commission-free stock, 
options and ETF trades. The only real con with Charles Schwab that I see is that their app and their interface is just seems a little clunky when you're looking at something like Robinhood or M1 Finance. But other than that, I can't really find any other cons here. Schwab checks the boxes of every type of investor. Stock traders will appreciate $0 trading commissions and sophisticated platforms, research, and tools. Beginner and fund investors will benefit from the wide selection of inexpensive and low minimum mutual funds and index funds. For those who want investment management, Schwab has a robo-advisor and financial advisor offering Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Charles Schwab has been around for over 52 years, and to me, that's one of the most important things because I look for long-term stability and long-term reputation. And speaking of stability and reputation, the next one on our list is called Fidelity. And I'm sure that either you already are invested within Fidelity, or at least you've heard of this one. The pros at Fidelity are commission-free stock, ETF and options trades, large selection of research providers, strong customer service, expense ratio free index funds, and highly rated mobile app. The cons is just that they have a relatively high broker assisted trade fee. Fidelity offers $0 trading commissions, a selection of more than 3,300 no transaction fee mutual funds, and top-notch research tools and trading platforms. Fidelity has some of the best and cheapest mutual funds out there. For example, FXAIX tracks the S&P 500 the exact same way that VU does, except FXAIX is way cheaper. Fidelity's also been around since 1946, so they've seen some ups and downs in the economy and they've been able to weather the storm. So for me, this is an all-around excellent choice. Now this next one has been around for 48 years and is kind of still stuck in the stone age, but it's had to revamp its website to keep up with the cool kids. So it's doing much better in that regard. It's one of the strongest and has one of the most assets under management. So I really like how sustainable this company is. And this one is Vanguard. Vanguard is the king of low cost investing, making it ideal for buy and hold investors and retirement savers. But beginner investors and active traders will find that the broker falls short despite its $0 stock trading commission due to the lack of a strong trading platform and accessible educational resources. The pros for Vanguard are that they have large mutual fund selections, commission-free stock options and ETF trades, and it's the leader in low cost funds. The cons is that it's a basic trading platform only and limited research and data. Vanguard is best for long-term investors and retirement investors. It's also best for those that want to invest in index funds or ETFs and those who prefer low cost investments. So which of these do I like best? We need to remember that the idea here is not about today or even the next couple years. For most of us, the bulk of our investing is for retirement and that may be 10, 20, 30 years away. The thing that should be highest on your list as far as where should I invest my money is this idea of safety. You wanna make sure that you put your money somewhere that at some time when you need that money, it's there and you're able to take it out. For that, you're gonna want a company that's been around for a while and who's seen some ups and downs in the economy and has been able to weather that storm. While Robinhood and M1 Finance are very cool with extremely awesome features, I have to stick with the old guys here and go with the tried and true. My favorites and what I recommend for pretty much anyone is Charles Schwab, Fidelity, or Vanguard. And I personally use Charles Schwab for pretty much all of my investing. As far as the newer ones though, I do think that Robinhood and M1 Finance are doing some super awesome things, especially the access to fractional shares. I do think that Charles Schwab and Fidelity will start to add those in even more. But overall, once Robinhood and M1 Finance get a little more history under their belts and they can prove that they can be a little bit more sustainable long-term, then I don't see any reason why those would be bad. Now that you know where to invest, watch this video on my prediction for the S&P 500 price by 2030 and also learn about the power of the rule of 72 which is going to make you very rich.